Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic and I'm back with another composition notebook project. I stocked up on composition notebooks during back to school season of 2023. Uh, I got quite a few of them for 50 cents and I'm looking forward to that time of the year. I think it kind of starts in July at Walmart um, where they start putting out back to school items so that I can stock up again. This notebook initially was intended to be a yearly planner. So I started it with these printable inserts that are available to Scrap Craftastic Patron Elites and Unlimited. If you are interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description box below. Go over and check us out. I have several different levels. You may find something that you are interested in. If you would like undated inserts, because these are dated, if you would like undated inserts, I also have them available in my Etsy shop, which is also linked in the description box below. So basically I just add these onto the pages. Now I have considered um, doubling up the pages, gluing them together with glue stick, and I still might, but because I'm adding the inserts on top of the composition notebook paper, it does make it a little more sturdy. By the time I add stickers and washi tape, I think we are good. I don't know why I did it, but I printed these on 32 pound paper and I prefer to use a lighter weight paper in here. So moving forward, if I can remember, I will use 20 pound paper, maybe 24 pound, but not the 32 pound paper for this. I think it actually makes the pages a little too heavy. So we'll work with that. Also, this is for January. So I'm going to start this in May, which means I'll just leave these pages in, even though I considered removing them, I'll leave these in and just redate everything. So we'll do that whole process. But before we get into decorating and setting up May and the weeklies, I would like to customize this cover. I have a graphic in mind that I wanna use. I just need to resize it and prep it. So I'm gonna go work on that graphic, get it ready. I think I'm gonna use a sticker paper method also. I'm not sure if I'm gonna sand this or not. I may need to sand it. Um, so I'm just gonna use a little glue stick, possibly sand this and sticker paper. And we're going to get this covered and ready to go. These are the graphics that I am going to use for the cover. She'll be on the front, she'll be on the back. These will be available to YouTube channel members. And I think I may put them on Patreon too, since they're a special case. Okay, so that's where you'll be able to find these. Now this is a little experiment that I wanted to try. Let's put that aside. So this was a misprint. This is what the actual graphic should look like. And I had a, I was running out of ink, so the color got off here. Um, so I've already treated this half with this Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Clear, okay? And I wanted to test it first because I'm thinking of putting a protectant or something on this to protect it. Now I printed these on sticker paper. So because it's on sticker paper and because of what this is, I wanted to test it before I just went and sprayed those. So this is how it turned out. It has like a little splotchiness to it, but I think that will go away with another coat of spray. It doesn't seem to affect the adhesive. It's still sticky. I tested it after I sprayed it. It's still, still got a stick. So I think that would be okay as an option, but I also wanted to try Mod Podge. And I have Glossy Mod Podge too, but I think the matte, being that I'm in a humid climate, it still leaves a bit of a gloss. It's not completely matte. So I think this might work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Mod Podge on this, but also, see I got a lot going on here. I'm gonna set these aside so I don't mess them up. In a recent video, I did glue tests for gluing paper to a poly cover. Someone mentioned in the comments that maybe sanding the poly material might help with adhering the paper to the poly. And I thought that was a great idea. I forgot about, I don't know why I forgot about that, but I have a piece of sandpaper here. I'm thinking I'm going to sand this a little bit because it does have a shiny finish on it. And since I'm going to be using sticker paper, 
and maybe just a little glue instead of double-sided tape like I did in the previous video. I thought it might be a good idea to sand. So, and you can get sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. So we will do that too. But let's go ahead and experiment with adding the Mod Podge to this. Another reason why I wanted to test these is because not only the sticker paper, but because I'm using an inkjet printer and the moisture can affect the ink. Let's get one of my mats. I guess I can move this too for now. And I'm gonna use this, even though it's got glitter on it, it should be fine. So I'm just gonna use one of these Dollar Tree spatulas to apply. It's probably better to use a sponge with the Mod Podge so you don't get the streaks so much. Yeah, see the color coming off? It probably wouldn't if I wasn't brushing so many times. Oops. I have to be really careful with it. All right, let's see how that turns out. It's gonna have streaks, but I'll give it time to dry. I can tell that the color looks a little different, but we'll see what happens. Okay, it's a little noisy now because the washing machine and dryer are going, but I want it to pop back on because I am not sure how I feel about the Mod Podge version. It feels, it has a nice feel to it, but when I peel this back, it looks like it's really saturating and bleeding through the paper a little bit more than what's going on here, I think. This is just an overall, I don't know. It just has a different feel. This feels more like vinyl than this does. Now, I forgot that I had the, acryl, the clear acrylic sealer from Mod Podge. It's probably very close to this, but I wanna test this too. I don't think I'll use this simply because as I was applying it, I could see some of the ink pulling up. So it's probably not a good idea, but they both have somewhat of a glossy finish. You can see there. All right, so I have another misprint on sticker paper. So I'm gonna use part of this because some of it I can use for something else. So let's see what I can get out of this. I can use the top part for something. And then I'm just gonna cut a piece off of this and save the rest for other testing other, another day. So we're gonna work with this and then I'm gonna go outside and spray. Okay, so I'm outside with my spray box and I'm gonna add that to it. I should have took the lid off, shake that up really well. and spray. Now ideally I could, should put a few coats on here. So I'm gonna give that a moment to rest and then come back. I think the spray option is gonna be better than brushing on something. Again, cause I stand more risk of moving the ink if I brush, spraying I'm not gonna move the ink. Okay, I'm gonna add another coat. And give that a chance to dry. See what happens. All right, so this is the Mod Podge acrylic spray. This is how it turned out. And it curled, well they all curled a little bit. This one didn't do much. This one, the Rust-Oleum has a glossier finish. This is truly matte. There is no glossiness to it. Now it says it's a protectant. I don't know if it's water resistant. This says it's a sealer and a finish. So I don't know. Um, but I think I'm either, I'm gonna end up going with a spray. And I think that I like the Mod Podge finish best. I wonder how this would 
fold if I had to fold it will it crack this won't crack because there's nothing there to crack yeah I think it would be fine I don't know because I kind of like the shiny look too all right well we're gonna go outside and spray the covers and I'll go from there. Maybe between now and the time I get out there, I'll decide which one I wanna use. All right, so I decided to go with the clear coat, the Rust-Oleum. So let's do this. I got the graphics in the box. Okay, so I will do several coats and then we will move forward with this. Okay, I am back with the dry versions. They have a texture feel to them, but I think they turned out pretty nice. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside and work on sanding off some of this finish and then we will move forward. I don't wanna sand too much and I don't wanna get on the black uh, spine area. Let's wipe this off. Now I should probably do the same thing to the inside, but I'm not going to. I think the outside cover is gonna get the most wear and tear. So I'll focus my efforts there. Now let's move this out of the way. And still feels a little slick. So I don't know that did a, a, a lot of good. Well, the inside doesn't have that glossy coating though, but we'll see, okay. I need to trim these down. So this is the one that goes on the front. Let's see what we can do. So this will go here. I'm gonna trim off the top part. All right, let me see if I can carefully ink this edge because it's going to show if I don't and you can use your ink uh, your distress ink or whatever ink but I just feel like the marker is easier faster even though I have a chance of making a big mess with it now that I'm wondering should I cut anything off before I put it in place or should I just put it in place and cut off after and I probably should have left it and wrapped it. You know, that would have made more sense. If I had done that, I could have just slid it up a little bit and wrapped that part around. Why did I have to cut it? <laughs> that would have been so much better. All right, I'm gonna leave it like this. We won't be able to wrap the top, but possibly the sides. I guess I should do the, the marker here too. All right, so I'm gonna use my Scotch Create glue stick to get this started. And I probably should go all the way to the edge with some um, double-sided tape. I actually thought about that. What do we think? Is that necessary? I'm gonna try it this way first. We're gonna to learn together. I'm sure I will do so many of these and do the covers different ways. So at least that way you can find what works for you and what holds up best for you. All right, so I'm only putting a little bit of glue here at the beginning of this so that I can get things lined up. And I did get a little glue on the spine area. Let's see if that's gonna be up all the way to the edge. I think so. All right, and is this gonna go all the way down to the edge? No, let's crook it. Let's go on down this side with the glue. Let's go ahead and do the whole thing. 
Now this is sticker paper, but I'm using the glue as added adhesion. Plus it gives me a little more, more wiggle room. I don't think that's gonna dry too fast. All right, let's continue going down this side. All right, so now we can just hopefully smooth this over without making a big mess, kind of making a big mess. So the next time I know to start down the side instead of trying to start in a corner. I see air bubbles. Let's use the rounded side of the ruler to smooth that out. Okay. That's nice. Make sure I don't have any air bubbles. So as far as this part, I am gonna wrap it around and I'm gonna do that on the back. When I do the back, I'm just gonna use the whole thing. Let's miter that corner. Let's miter this a little bit as well. And let's do the long side first. So this is the same kind of wrap that I would do if I'm making a book cover. Kind of, just wrap it around. I don't know how I'm going to do that corner situation, but we'll deal with it. I'll probably end up snipping it off or something. I don't know. I think I like that. Now when I do that, I don't understand why the edge of the notebook always starts hanging out when I put a cover on. Look at that, it's gonna have glare, but it's pretty, right? Very nice. Okay, let's do this side. Now let's do this one right, the right way. So I'm just gonna cut this side off, the side that goes next to the spine, and then leave everything else in place. Got our inking done. We're gonna center this up like so, after we put down some glue. Just enough to get it started. Let's peel the backing off. This way I don't have to worry about getting it straight on two sides. As long as I get it straight against the spine, the rest of it will wrap. Okay, so then I can go on and add more glue. And I guess I don't really need to do sections. I just kind of want to do sections at least to get it started with the glue. But let's see if we can just do the whole thing. And we want to not have any air bubbles. So I'm just going to peel that backing off and smooth slowly as I go across. This is so cool. Okay. Let's miter these corners. I still need to figure out how to do this the right way. But I think I'll figure it out eventually. All right, let me see. If I turn this in, what will happen? It's kind of tricky because we got rounded corners here. 
That's not quite right. <laughs> it should cover the whole corner. So maybe I should leave it open. What should I do? All right, that's a little better. But the outside is fabulous. Look at that. Okay, I really, really like it. I just wish I had done something different there. So we know next time, don't cut off any other sides, just the side that goes next to the spine. Did I get good coverage there? I got a little glue. Other than that, I think we are good. All right, so the next thing I'll do is start actually setting it up. Of course, I'm gonna do something to the inside covers. I just don't know what yet. I may use one of the digitals that I already have and do the sticker thing again. This is what our cover is looking like. I'm just so impressed that I keep looking at it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Wow. So I was gonna go ahead and work on the layout for the monthly, but I decided to go ahead and finish up these inside covers. No point in waiting. So I created these two sheets using some of, or well, most of the dashboards or dolls that I created um, over the last few months. So I think this was the first dashboard that I did. And then I just kind of filled in the, the blocks. So I thought that would be cool to use here. Now, because I didn't wrap the top of this initially, I put a piece of washi tape here and then I just went along the edge with my black marker. You can see here, I didn't go all the way. So I just used this thin black washi from Simply Gilded and just placed a piece there so that it would kind of match the bottom. I also added an additional piece on the bottom here to go all the way to the edge. I probably didn't need to do that because now when I place this on here, you'll see that because I am not going all the way to the binding with the graphic because that'll interfere with the cover folding properly. So I don't want to go all the way. Also, I took one of the corners when I mitered the corners, um, I took one of those pieces and trimmed it up and put it here so that it would cover the white because it wasn't covering it. Again, that all happened because I did not wrap this. So now when I place this on here, my edges will be covered. I didn't want to go all the way to the edge with this. If you look in a book, in just like a regular, uh, I guess hardbound book, the end papers on the inside do not go all the way to the edge usually. So I'm kind of keeping with that. So I'm gonna round the corners on the outside. I probably should go get my small corner rounder, but let's see what we can do with this one. I think this will be fine. All right, and then I'm just gonna take my marker again and hit that. And when I'm doing this with the marker, I come from the back. That way, if I slip, I'll slip on the back and not on the front. So if I make a mistake like that, it'll be on the back and not on the front. And I did not do the marker on this edge. I did go around the other three edges with the marker. I didn't do it on the right-hand side because the right-hand side will be up against white and I didn't want to have a black line on the white side. Those are all like little details that just make things better. <laughs> so I try to pay attention to those types of details because if it looks kind of raggedy, I won't use it. So that's, there's that. And I'm just gonna do what I did before, peel off a little bit, get that ready. And because this is sticker paper, I'm just gonna use my glue stick to put it down. Oh, and I did spray these pages, the sticker papers with, um, oh, what do you call it? The Mod Podge sealant. So it's not as glossy, but it still gives it a protection, somewhat of a protection, so. Yeah, I did treat them. I sprayed them. That's why the paper is kind of curling a little bit. 
I need to get my little water spray bottle so I can spray the lid. All right, so I'm limited a little bit on space here. And sorry about the washing machine, but this is a functioning household. All right, so I'm just gonna try and line that up. Ugh. I guess I need to fold this back a little cleaner so that it's not in the way. There we go. So I can line these up as straight as I can get it. Leave the same amount of space at the top and the bottom. See, that's where the, the glue stick comes in handy. It gives you that wiggle room to play. I mean, it does cause a problem sticking to the backing, but I'd rather have the wiggle room to play and not worry about the backing so much. I think it's a little crooked, but I'm just gonna have to be happy with it. All right, so down here, I still have the issue with this corner not being quite right. I'm gonna put a little glue on it. I still haven't figured out how to wrap these corners properly since they're rounded, but I'm sure if I do this enough times, I'll figure out something. So I'll just try to glue that down. Okay, so there we go with the inside cover. Um, Let's do the back. Let's make sure that's burnished down. Okay. Let's do this one. Now, on the back, instead of doing the washi tape all the way over, I think I'll just touch up with the marker. And the next time, I'll make sure, touch up right there and touch up right here. And let's see, this is a little crooked, so I'm just going to go all the way across, just in case this shows. It shouldn't, but just in case. So next time, I will make sure that I leave enough extra space on top and bottom when I create my graphic so that I don't have that issue. So here we go. This will go like this and like that. Okay, so instead of filling in this space with tape, I'm just going to fill it in with the marker. So have yourself a good black um, alcohol ink. I think this is alcohol ink. This is a Prismacolor. I've had this for a long time. Premier in black. When you have to do little touch up things like that, it's great. And if you don't have ink and don't want to go through all the trouble of inking edges, again, it's great for that. You just have to be careful. You could use a, um, a Sharpie. I just really don't like the smell of Sharpie. So that's why I just use my Prismacolor. And I think you can get a decent alcohol ink from five below. So you don't have to spend a lot. Okay. All right, let's get this one started. Do my glue, let me get that water so I can spray my lid. It's getting a little dried up again. Did I get most of it up? I hope so. All right, I think I'm sitting back too far. Spray the lid. Put that on. Let's do this. I think I'll be printing my stuff and covering things. It's so much easier with the sticker paper. It's really easy. An easy DIY solution. The sticker paper. I'll link to the sticker paper that I use in the description box below. And I usually always have a link to my Amazon uh, shop. 
so pretty much anything that I use you can find in that shop. That's what that looks like. Very nice. All right. So I think I need to sit this under something a little heavy so that it can relax the moisture in the glue stick. Kind of has things curling a little bit. So I'm going to put something heavy on this for now and then I will come back and actually do the spread. Okay, so I am back. Before we get back into everything, I just kind of wanted to show you something here. I have these digitals there from the spring florals that I did. Everything was fine when I was printing and then my printer started running out of ink. So you can see the difference here in the color, but I didn't throw them away because I feel like I can still use them. So I went ahead after I printed them and cut them. Here is another one, it got even more purple. Okay, and then this one. So I, I didn't know the printer was running out of ink, but this is what I got. So this is what it should look like, and this is what I got. But this, I'm just showing you this because you don't necessarily have to throw the misprints away. You can probably find a way to use them. There's really nothing wrong with this. I can use it. Okay, just want to point that out. Now, so these are the books that I put on here to hold the composition notebook in place. So let's take those up. Now I, it kind of stuck to my desk. I think it's better. Yeah, it's nice and flat. I just left them on there for a couple of hours. I'm gonna be decorating for May and I thought I would do a Cinco de Mayo theme even though Mother's Day is in May, but I don't know. I'd just rather do something different. So. This is a release to patrons. It's out now. It is May Florals. And I also made a smaller version by putting two on the page while I was in silhouette. So that's what the smaller one looks like. Then this is a dashboard. Where's the one that's printed on? I think I printed this on sticker paper, but this is a dashboard. Uh, this was the Friday freebie. So if you are a Facebook group member, you have access to this, to this download. It is around half letter size. It has an eighth of an inch bleed. So I increased the size a little bit because I want to use it in the composition notebook. So I did a little Photoshop with it and made it a little bit bigger, but I can use either one. Okay. And then this is the kit that I created for Cinco de Mayo for the week of Cinco de Mayo halfway to Halloween was also mixed up in there so I wanted to do something different and I did the halfway to Halloween uh, in the Dollar Tree planner I'll link to that video in the iCard up above so you can go check it out but I also went ahead and created a kit for Cinco de Mayo and I printed two sheets of that so that's what I have to work with um I'm not sure what I'm doing with these uh, first few pages I think I want to do a folder and I don't know that I left myself enough space up here to do that. I may end up having to do it on the inside somewhere and use those pages for something else. So let's see here. I also have a set of Cinco de Mayo inspired patterns. And I know we're right here on the 5th by the time you see this uh, at Cinco de Mayo. But you can always have them in your stash. They're digitals. Have them in your digital stash to use at another time. Or you can use them throughout the year. I mean, it's not really that specific. This is more like a, a spring summer look to me. Anywho, so I could either just add this to the page, which is what I think I might do because there's really no point in tipping this in unless I were to tip it in here. That I could do. Let's try that. Let's see, do I have room on the spine? Let's try it that way. I am going to trim it down and get it ready. Then decorate the page and add it in after. So I'm going to round these outside corners. Let's go ahead and put these down and in place. Decide what kind of look we're going for. I think I can do something with these. We'll see. Maybe I'll use this for the weekly 
we already passed that week or we're at the end of that week and then use these for the monthly. Then if she's going to go here, there's not a whole lot I need to do up top. I basically just need to redate this. Let's see if I have anything from Coco's Vision that I want to use. I think we are going to use Aisha. So I had these in my old B6 Stalogy that I started at the beginning of the year, but I think I can move them over here and start using some of them here. So let's do this to convert this to May. And then this is a whole sheet of holidays. All of these are available to Scrap Craftastic Patron Unlimited. All right, time to redate. So the first is on Wednesday. Let's just use a teeny tiny bit. So let's see what we got in here. Let's do these date dots. Let's use some of these. So may the fourth be with you. It's here. Cinco de Mayo is here. Mother's Day. It's here. When is Memorial Day? Is it on the 27th? Yep. So this can go here. And all of these I think can go for next year. An unofficial start of summer is also Memorial Day, but I'm not going to put it because there's no room. Now, I'm going to use this May flower sticker because April showers bring May flowers. I'm just going to put it in the empty box. And is there anything from here that I need to use? No, so I can save those. I'm going to add a few boxes. See if I have any with this blue color. I think I do. You have a birthday. Ooh, I wish I had some big, bigger birthday stickers than what I got. These are a little small. That is on the 11th. So small. I'm leaving room in case I have like a balloon sticker or something that I can add. Definitely need a pocket to go in here so that I can add that. All right, so now she's gonna go on here. And I think I'm just going to tip her in the way I've been doing it with the 1 8 inch double sided tape. I got this on Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive. I'll link to supplies in the description box below. I feel like I need to put something more here, but I guess not. 
Oh, I could put some more florals up there. We could do that. Peel off the backing. Line this up where I want it to be on this page. So you don't see the whole calendar at once, but I'm okay with that because this is kind of for fun. It's not that serious. Now let's look at this floral and see what else we can use. Get my contrast sheet. I need to trim these little corners off where I didn't do the washi tape right. That's pretty simple. I could fill that in too. Maybe with a little wool washi tape. Let's try it. I like to do something with the empty boxes. Beautiful. I like that. Let's move on to the week. All right. Uh-oh. So now I don't have anything to put on May the 4th and Cinco de Mayo, <laughs> de Mayo because I already used those. Let's do the days of the week first. I think I can use these. Five, four, three, two, one, thirty-one, thirty. Yeah. So since I have these left, let's use these. Oh wait. This was April, so April only has thirty days. So this needs to go here. Now, let's see, how do we want to decorate? Let's use the green in the footer. Kind of want to put some black on here, but let's not. Use some boxes. Okay, so these were designed for Mardi Gras, but I think I'm going to use the yellow at least for this spread. All right, let's see if I can do this on the actual sheet. So I'm going to peel this up halfway and fold it over and then put my glasses on good. <laughs> I don't think it makes it any easier doing it this way to line it up. It's still kind of complicated. So I am going to put this kind of here. Just make sure we are lined up good in the back. Mm -hmm. So we got that and it didn't line up good. Oh, I should have known because this doesn't come all the way over. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to put this here. Oh, the 24th. Okay, I can put this here. Last day of school. <laughs> All right, so I don't have to put those back. Now, this is an issue that I'm just going to ignore for now.
Okay. I think I'll add some bling to this. I kind of want to use the black. There's Cinco de Mayo. I do want to get a 2024 sticker here so that I can put that here. So when I come back to this years from now, I'll know. Now this is so empty. I think I'm gonna put a nice quote here. Let me see what I can find. All right, so this is the old watercolor book from Happy Planner from 2016. And I think I can use a little something out of here. I'm going to use this appointment sticker with the yellow. Let's go with a to do. Just because. Let's use some of these. Um, let's use it there. No, nope, let's use it there. I guess I could use this. The best is yet to come, or I could have used you got this. But I'm going to use the best is yet to come right there. Break up that space. Then let's use some of these to do like a list. Let's move one of these down and then use this note. Okay, that might be good enough because then I'm gonna come along the top with the green washi again. And I was trying to decide, do I wanna use the thick one or should I go with the thin? I think we'll do the thin. And I think that's pretty cute. It's not everything that I hoped it would be. <laughs> But considering I got two different Cinco de Mayo looks, I think we're good. I do need something down here though. It's, it needs a little something, something small. That's just gonna have to do. <laughs> okay. So we are done. We did a lot. We did the covers which are the best, the inside cover. Okay. Then I did the beginning setup of May. So the monthly for May. And that's what it looks like. Tipped in the vellum and did the weekly setup through the 5th of May. For Cinco de Mayo and we're all set so the next week will be for Mother's Day I haven't designed any stickers for that yet so I need to get on it I'm trying to get ahead so hopefully I will get ahead I'm really happy with how this is turning out the cover is really really nice and sturdy since I use the spray let me know what you think in the comments below this should be fun to work in and again I am using this for fun let me know what you think I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and you may be interested in this other video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.